Uh, so a month ago, you told Charlie Rose that the, the NSA data tracking, because all of this is about data, right? Uh, it was a good thing. Uh, it's a little bit broad to, um, to, to frame it that way, but I'll, I'll stand by or I'll, I'll, I'll clarify what I said. So there are several things going on in the NSA controversy. And since the conversation I had with Charlie, more information has come to light, some of which is definitely pretty distasteful. Um, the thing that I disagreed with versus the popular media is that NSA is broadly classified as evil. I think it's ridiculous for a citizen of a country that views his government duty to protect me, protect all of us from evil, from harm, from terrorists, from foreign powers, meaning ill, to classify a body of government that is designed to figure out what might hit us next and prevent it, throwing them into an evil bucket is just thoughtless. Like These people are making $40,000 a year. Not because it's, a, it's not a path to wealth. It's not a way to get recognized. When I was a kid, I, or a kid, when I was a, in college, I applied to the NSA. I couldn't get accepted because I was not a citizen yet. And the first thing the recruiter told me was, do you realize that? So I, I, was, I was a crypto nerd. I was very excited about applying cryptography for the good of the country that I literally just came to. The guy said, the one thing you should be very clear about, not only will you pay, get paid peanuts, you will also never achieve fame as a mathematician because you are not allowed to publish any result that you find as a mathematician under the uh, employment of the NSA, which might sound one more terrible thing than the NSA does, but actually it kind of makes sense. They want to protect their secrets, blah, blah, blah. So I fortunately or unfortunately, whatever, whichever way you want to cut it, did not go down that road. I started companies for fun and profit, but people who do go down that road, many of them very talented, smart people, they do it basically out of sense of duty to make sure nothing blows up in this very room. I think affording them some respect is a good thing. The fact that they want to break my secure sockets layer bothers me. I don't like that. I, I don't think that's a good thing. And I just think that the debate around the NSA has gotten emotional, frequently information free, and at times just belligerent for no reason. So that's what I was trying to say. So in light of the NSA scare and in light of the information or misinformation around it, how willing do you think the average person is to give up data like when they're ovulating or, or this kind of personal stuff in, in return for safety or, or insurance or, or convenience even? I think so long as people are willing to fax in their social security numbers and their signatures to their traditional health insurer, we are way, 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 way up that scale as far as trustability and security and safety, and I'm not too worried about that. But back to sort of what it's all about, I think you can probably relate to it better than I can, having uh, your own, uh, hopefully, future motherhood, if you so choose, in front of you. Once you want to have a child, there's not a lot you will not do to have that child, and for all the good reasons. We're biologically and historically pre-programmed to procreate above everything else. So we will take the greatest possible care of your data. We will make sure that it is safe and encrypted and anonymized and we'll never leak it or sell it or give it up to the NSA, my personal views in a matter notwithstanding. But people ultimately want a baby. They don't really fixate that much on whether someone else knows about their ovulating or, or not. And OBGYNs and IVF clinics are 